Hi, friends. Welcome to another fun episode of Good Looking Kickstarters. I'm one of your hosts, Ruel Gaviola. And I'm Becca Scott, and I also like fun. Yes, and there's a bunch of things that start with the letter F that I like, such as food. What about you, Becca? Fighting! Yes! I think we found an episode theme. Okay, Ruel, tell me about some Kickstarter games. We're going to fight, folks. We're going to fight in... The best way to fight is on the tabletop, of course. So the first game I want to look at is For Glory. Uh, this is a game that was out a couple of years ago, um, but now it's back on Kickstarter, the reprint of the base game and the Champions expansion. This is designed by Alex Wolf with art by Jacob Atencia and Crimson Studio. Uh, in For Glory, you are leading a gladiatorial combat school. Um, did you ever go to gladiatorial combat school, Becca? Man, every day feels like gladiatorial combat school to me. Oh yeah. I think that we are um, definitely the underdog at this school because all of the artwork is from the perspective of us already lying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's hilarious, right? So we are going to be uh, putting together our gladiators in school and using deck building, which is one of my favorite mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're gonna deck build and get our uh, gladiators out there and then use them for combat. And we're gonna recruit gladiators, secure support from patrons and, you know, get in the arena and, you know, go kick some gladiator butt. Even gladiators had Patreons. I have mightily fought in battle. And if you'd like it to continue, please pledge at, at least $5 a month. <laughs> Gladiators were the original content creators. So with the new expansion, it increases the player count up to four players. So it was originally a two player game. So now you can play up to four with your favorite content creating gladiator buddies. Or you can also play solo, which is great. I'm a big solo gaming fan. So, you know, with the new upgradable champion cards and all kinds of new mechanisms, for Glory is something that I am looking forward to. I mean, what is it about deck building that we love so much? I find it very satisfying as well. I think it's because I like shopping. I've never thought of it like that. That's brilliant, yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking about gladiator rings and like fighting, utopia. You know what every great utopia starts with? What? A machine that's gonna do everything for you. That's how City of the Great Machines started. It's great, you wanna move here, it's excellent. It's just that you have no more free will and we are servants to the machine that we created to do everything for us, but like, it's no big deal. Basically sounds like where we're going with Amazon. Anyway, City of the Great Machine is a steampunk themed one versus all, two to four player game. It plays in 45 to 90 minutes. Yeah, right, it's really big. It's gonna take longer than that. It's for ages 14 plus and it's from Crow D Games. They're based in Florida and the designer is German Tikomarov. That's a great name. I like that name. I wanted to say it right. I think I got it. I say you did. Did you ever read the book Brave New World by Aldous Huxley in like grade school or high school? Oh, I was assigned that book back in college and I remember reading the Cliff Note version, but I never actually read the, the book. But from the Cliff Notes, it seemed really good. It is really good. I read it as a grown up and basically the world is perfect. It's utopia, except everybody's being drugged. Anyway, it reminded me of that world, but more steampunky with a super cool progress tracking clock. What is it about steampunk and clocks? I, I every time I think steampunk, I just see big giant clocks. It's like steampunks were like the four uh, forefathers of like Flava Flav, you know, with the big clock. <laughs> <laughs> Deep cut, my favorite dating show of all time. The Flavor Love, yes. <laughs> okay, so this is one verse all, which maybe isn't for everyone. If I don't know, you don't like being the one person on the other side, but I do. And I wanna be the great machine because you get three minis to control on, on your own while the other players just get their one beautiful mini that they get to control. Obviously I have a, like a control thing. I don't know if you knew that about me. <laughs> <laughs> so, the one person playing the great machine, they're operating this artificial intelligence network in the steam-powered city, of course, with clocks, lots of clocks, and they are working to perfect their master plan for humankind, suppressing social unrest. Um, not creepy at all, totally not upsetting, right? Yeah, wow, this this theme is crazy good. I, I, I love the theme already. I know, start with something super dark and then make someone play to fulfill the even darker version. 
<laughs> so obviously, first pick for me is the Great Machine. The heroes, which is all other players, get a character card and a character mini, and their goal is to lead the people in three successful riots to win the game. That's fun. What other games are going to have you start a riot? Not enough. Th this type of game, it reminds me just a little bit of Fury of Dracula, where you have one player's Dracula and the other player's working to get Dracula. You know, it's gotten a little bit of that, um, but I love the fact that you're trying to start riots. I mean, I want to start a riot. I mean, not in real life, but, you know, maybe at the tabletop. Another really cool thing about the design of City of the Great Machine is that instead of a board, it has these modular district boards, so things can kind of move around and change from playthrough to playthrough. That's amazing. And again, th I think of a game like Zulkin, where you're trying to you know move your workers around, these great little gears that are intertwined. Same type of thing here in City of the Great Machine, where you're trying to set yourself up and figure out the puzzle as you play the game. Um, it's a beautiful game. I'm really excited to play it and I already backed it. Oh, was this an insta back? This was an insta back for me, yeah. I mean, you know, you say Victorian steampunk and I get to be the big bad, I'm in. Looks good. The only problem is if somebody else wants to play the great machine, we're really gonna have to fight in the gladiator rings. Visit my Patreon if you want to decide the battle. I will take a dive if my patrons want it. And if you support the Gladiator patrons, you can get your very <gasps> own Gladiator <laughs> helmet. You owe it. Michelle, well done. <laughs> All this fighting makes me hungry. Now, you can't spell steampunk without steam up, and steam up is a food game, Becca. We're moving on to food. Nothing beats a big plate of dim sum. I'm gonna tell you folks, I'm in love with this game. I don't know if I wanna back it or if I wanna eat it. I would eat, marry, and kill. This is designed by Pauline Kong, Heyman Lee, Mary Wong, with art by Grace Tejada, um, Tim Chang, and YDX Art. Steam Up is a competitive two to five player light, medium, weight game. Um, you're eating dim sum. Hold on, did I just, is this all female made game? I believe it is, yeah. This is an all female uh, crew of designers. You know, I'm so happy to see this already doing well here on Kickstarter. Folks, we are eating dim sum and we're at the restaurant. We've got these steamers on a rotating table. You're gonna move them around. You're gonna spend your food tokens to purchase the steamers and place the dim sum on your player boards. I mean, how cute is this? You're gonna also draw and play fortune cards, deal with events, cause you know, there's all kinds of events happening at uh, your local dim sum restaurant. And you know, I love the fact that the deluxe version of this has the wooden animal scoring markers and Becca, I've got three words for you. Dim sum squishies. No! Squishies! Are you telling me these meeples go squish? Folks, do not eat these because I totally want to eat them. But I mean, they have the juicy pork dumplings. They have the sticky rice. They have the shrimp and they have the uh, Phoenix claws. They said don't eat these about Tide Pods and those didn't even look like food. <laughs> This is insane. I love this integrated um, mini design that the board is a modular, like wooden steam container. Yes. This is so beautifully done. I mean, I everyone needs a copy of this game just to show off how cool games can look. Recently, there was a game called Chai that came out. It was based about, you know, teas, and it was one of the most beautifully produced games I've seen in recent years. This one, Steam Up, is along those same lines. I'm always hungry. Well, I am always hungry, and today, you know what I'm hungry for more than anything? What? Human flesh. Uh-oh. Snack Time is a roll and write game for up to a gazillion players, ages 8 plus, so good for the kiddos. It's from Backfire Games, they're based in Utah. These are two game creators that met working for Hasbro. So you know, they got some game shops under their belt. Nice. Wow, Hasbro, that's like... That's like the top dog right there. That's a little, it's a little top doggy. Yeah, oof. So you have an underground monster pet. You're trying to feed the unsuspecting pedestrians who I imagine are very bad people and deserve it. They, yeah, they totally deserve getting eaten by these monsters. Yeah, I agree. So we're trying to feed these pedestrians to our monsters without getting caught by animal control. So the design of this game, they have this black, purple, orange color scheme, which I really like it because the black silhouettes of people make me think that I'm in the sewer looking up at them. You know, I, what I really like about this one, Becca, is it reminds me a little bit of Railroad Inc. Uh, this that game came out a few years ago. Another roll and write, but that was more. It was the the theme was a little more straightforward. Just you know, you're building little routes for your trains and stuff. This I'd rather play something where I'm gonna eat human flesh. It feels a little bit like Dungeon Academy from the Op to me oh, as yeah. well. 
Um, this game has custom dice. You roll them and you either get traits for your monster that let them eat certain pedestrians, or you're gonna get different sewer pipes that you use to sort of lead your monster up to get their foods. I, I, I love it. And you know, the roll and write genre, we, you know, we enjoy so many different uh, types of these uh, games. And this genre is gonna be, you know, it's gonna be hot forever because these are the type of games that can play, like you said, a gazillion people at the same time. And they're really easy to get into. And there's, in this one, there's, I mean, there's some nice little uh, strategic uh, elements to it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it also has a really interesting commentary to it because different pedestrians have different social values that, that makes your pet more or less likely to be hunted by animal control for eating them, which is hilarious and also pretty depressing reflection of, you know, how we deal with crime in the real world. Um, so really interesting game, just a cute small game, but with really interesting sort of social questions being brought up. I, I think that about sums it up for today's good looking Kickstarters. Fight. Fight! And also subscribe and like this video and share! Anything else, Rule? That's it. I think we nailed it. Can Michelle make me a hat? Mm -hmm.